Uh, okay, wonderful. Um, and so that's, I'm, I'm glad that you, you mentioned um, that and you went through the um, science of, of the protein structure of the HIV virus because my next question is going to be um, uh, to respond to some of the, the um, common AIDS, so-called AIDS dissenter claims that are just floating around on the Internet waiting to deceive somebody. Right. And here's claim number one. The okay. HIV virus has never been isolated. We what isolated do you say that? We isolated every day where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> In the HIV center, we isolate HIV every day. Many different types of HIV in terms of strains, but all of them capable of causing AIDS, that's for sure, uh, other than those that have been mutated. Wonderful. Yes, uh, many people in the literature is filled with people isolating HIV on a routine basis. This is a routine laboratory procedure for people that are working in the field. Mm. So, so that claim has no basis. Has no basis whatsoever. Just no basis. Complete, no, no basis. Complete move. So now, um, and, 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 and just kind of following up on that, to kind of for some FYI um, out there for, for the listeners. Um, okay. Uh, how, how, what is, what is um, the process of isolating a virus? Can you, can you give us a little bit, not, not a whole lot, on, on sure. kind of what that procedure sure. is like? Now, are you, want, you want to start from the patient or the refrigerator? From, from the refrigerator, and then we, we can talk about okay. you know, isolating so, from the so patient. The idea is that uh, let's say we have some cells that we've infected with the virus that were sent to, sent to us from another clinical investigator. Okay. Okay then we would propagate the, that virus. When I say propagate, we would cultivate or, or allow that virus to replicate in cells that it would normally replicate in, which is T cells or macrophages. So in the laboratory, we have a number of macrophage and T cell lines that are kept in cryopreservation. And we take these cells out, and we grow them up, and then we add the virus to them. And then over time, the virus causes what we what we call in the laboratory cytopathic effects in many cases. So the cells will develop uh, uh, syncytia formation, meaning that the HIV virus will cause these cells to clump, some cells it will cause them to die, and, and so forth. And then what we would do then is that we would do a process that is called differential centrifugation. Now what that means is that we will take the cells and the virus mixture as a liquid that contains cells and everything. So the virus is initially is mixed with cells. And then we would, we would spin this preparation, you know, at, at, at refrigerator temperatures in a machine called a centrifuge. Okay. Now, the centrifuge is designed to allow particulate matter to settle down as a pellet and liquids to, to, to be separated from particulate matter. And so we can take off the virus in the liquid portion of that mixture and leave the pellet in the bottom of the tube. Mm. Now, then what we want to do now, the virus might be in a volume that, is, that, is, that would make it not really concentrated. So we want to do a concentration step. Now, the concentration step would mean we would take that liquid, leaving the cells behind, and then we would spin that at a faster speed. Okay? All right. And uh, we would spin that at a speed that's fast enough to allow the HIV virus now to sediment. Initially, we spin it at a, a low speed to let the heavier thing sediment. Now, we have to spin it at a much higher speed for HIV to, to sediment in the bottom of the tube. And so, once that happens, uh, after spinning it uh, again, at refrigerated temperatures, because we want everything to be cold, because viruses don't like heat. They become inactive in the presence of heat. And so after that, we can resuspend that virus pellet in a small amount of, uh, of, of buffer, and then we can freeze that away at um, minus 80 degrees, uh, and uh, the virus is purified at that point. And again, what we would do is that we would then use some of the purified virus to infect and make sure that it's making all the proteins. And then we would, uh, we would analyze um, 
we would do a, a bioassay to determine how many virus particles we got in a given volume. This is called titering a virus. And so we would titer the virus, and then the virus would be put away and taken out when we, use, when we need to make new infections. And that's pretty much it. Hmm. And, and, how is, and, and how is that different from isolating it from a person? Now, a person, what we would do is then is that we would, we would take probably blood from them, blood, plasma, blood, and then take uh, plasma, and then we, because the virus is, 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 is highly, uh, there's a lot of virus in the plasma, and then we would probably use that to infect fresh cells uh, and then, and then uh, isolate it from there. And so ah. that's, that's pretty much it, yeah. And so, yeah, we would, we would first have to make sure that the blood is normally a sterile medium. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If your blood has any kind of bacteria in it, then you've got a bacterial infection. You've right. got a bacteria, which is referred to as a bacteremia. But normally, in a healthy person, your blood is sterile. And so your plasma should be sterile as well. And mm -hmm. if you're infected with a virus, then we don't expect to get a lot of things out of the plasma. But again, remember, an HIV-infected person could, could have a lot of co-infections. And so that has to be considered when you're, when you're isolating virus as well. And one way we do it is that you can also do a uh, syncytia assay where you actually go in and pick out in a, a Petri dish one area in the dish uh, uh, that forms a syncytia that you expect to be responsible for one particular virus, viral mm. clone, and you can pick it out. And so that, or you can do something called limiting dilution uh, on, on infected cells to try and get just one virus particle that's, that's, that's causing the trouble, if you're thinking about any kind of other viruses that might be contaminating the system, or bacteria. And again, you can use antibiotics in your media to prevent um, any bacteria from growing. Well, okay. Well, that goes into our next question. Uh, okay. Well, I have a my I have a, a question before that, but I'm going to skip it and then come back to that. And sure. the, this question I'm going to ask you is, um, well, this this claim by the by the uh, dissenters, they say that the HIV virus does not feel coaches postulates. Okay. Now, would you right. say to that? Uh, so Robert Koch uh, postulates, uh, you're talking about a, a century before the, the HIV virus came on the scene, and Robert Koch has never heard of PCR, which is polymerase chain reaction. And when you think about the, the Koch postulates, it, let me just go through the postulates right quick for you. Okay. So, so Koch's postulate says that that the the organism that's in question, that is, the infectious agent should be seen in readily in the in the forms of that disease. Okay, it should second. It should be recovered from the disease state mm -hmm. and is, isolated in pure form. And then you should be able to take that isolated pure form of that infectious agent and reestablish that infection and cause those same disease entities in the the animal or organism that's being infected. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you have to really, Koch's postulate means starting from the infectious, the infected individual or organism, and then going full circle and isolating the infectious agent and infection, infecting the living organism again. And so when you look at HIV, HIV deals with all of those. And Koch's postulates were never designed to deal with viruses. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right. So viruses introduce a dilemma for Koch's postulates. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Now, okay, so let's just talk about how HIV deals with Koch's postulates in terms of meeting Koch's postulates. So nearly individuals that have AIDS you are able to isolate HIV from virtually every individual with HIV, with AIDS. Okay? Mm -hmm. that, is, that is clear. And, right. uh, and again, when you're using the right technology, 
virtually 